Hello Alexers, welcome back. The idea behind today's video is pretty simple, and you might find it useful if you're one of those people who takes home a decent paycheck, but at the end of the month finds there's none of it left. Or worse still, you're racking up debt. As a result, you have nothing left to put towards savings, let alone to invest in something that could be earning you long-term wealth. If this sounds like you, you might want to listen up, because there's a good chance you're making some of the mistakes on today's list. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. So without any more buildup, let's get straight to the point and look at the 15 biggest wastes of money. Number 1. Overdraft Fees and Credit Card Interest if you've ever had an overdraft fee or a fee for insufficient funds, you might have even felt slightly guilty about causing your bank an inconvenience. Well, don't. That's because the only person you're letting down is yourself. The truth is that banks love it when you withdraw or spend too much because the fees they charge for this are a huge source of income for them. American banks alone rake in over $30 billion annually in overdraft fees. And if you find yourself on the sharp end of one of these, it could mean you're digging yourself further and further into a whole lot of debt. Sure, you could cover yourself with overdraft protection, but that's going to cost you as well. And it's another money spinner for banks. A much better idea is to just keep track of your bank balance and be careful not to spend what you don't have. And what about the interest you pay to your credit card company because you haven't paid your bill in time? Exactly the same idea. Stop paying for things that happened in the past, and if you can't trust yourself to pay it off, ditch the credit card altogether. Number 2. Subscriptions or Memberships We're not saying you shouldn't have any of these. If you're a committed gym goer who gets the most out of your membership, then we're not talking about you. But on the subject of gyms, here are just a few facts that should make you think. On average, gym owners know people are going to sign up and never turn up. In fact, they only expect 25% of people to go to the gym consistently. If all their members went regularly, they wouldn't be able to fit them all through the door. But why be one of the 75% who are not getting their money's worth? If you're not going, just cancel it. And what about all the other subscriptions you've got? More and more businesses are using subscription business models for small monthly sums. And if you don't keep track of them, lots of small fees can add up and eat into your earnings. In fact, somebody's even thought up an expression for this, subscription creep. Check your bank statements and cancel anything you're not using or just doesn't justify the cost. Number 3. In-game and in-app purchases The idea here is similar to the last one. A few years ago, developers found out that making users buy an entire app usually doesn't work. Instead, they came up with the idea of getting you to make small but frequent payments. And if you don't keep an eye on them, they add up. Sure, some paid apps might actually be useful and worth it, but most of them probably aren't. And if we're talking about a game that asks you to pay real money for an in-game currency or extra lives, let's be honest about the utility of this to you. Zero. And what about paying for catchy ringtones? Guess what? Your phone's still gonna ring even if you don't buy them. Number 4. Take Away Coffee Yes, it seems like a good way to kickstart the day or to treat yourself after a productive morning, but have you ever figured out how much it adds up to? Of course, it depends on how much takeaway coffee costs where you are, but the average American spends $1,100 a year on coffee. And that's just the average, which means there are plenty of people spending a lot more. Try making coffee at home or at your workplace and just watch that cost get slashed. And what if you just love getting your caffeine fix in Starbucks or at your chic but pricey local cafe? There's nothing wrong with it, but try making it a once in a while treat rather than a daily habit. Number 5. Waiting until you're hungry to buy food Okay, we get it, you're busy. Welcome to the club. You don't have any food in the fridge or with you at your workplace. You start to feel hungry, so what do you do? Maybe you order a pricey takeaway. Once in a while, sure, but all the time, really? Or you might want to resist the urge for takeaway and take a trip to the grocery store. If you wait until you're hungry to do this, you'll probably find yourself stocking up on snacks or junk food, or ingredients that you'll dig into for one meal and then completely forget about, and they'll go to waste. 
Instead, try planning ahead. Go food shopping once a week. Invest a little time into preparing that food and take meals you've prepared to work. You'll find yourself saving money, wasting less food, and you'll have something ready to go when you start to feel hungry next. Number 6. Cigarettes does this one really need an explanation? And we'll spare you the health warning. Not just because today's topic is money, not health, but also because you've heard it so many times before. The fact is, cigarettes aren't cheap. In the USA, a regular pack of 20 will still cost about $7.50. In the UK, it's more like $12. And in Australia, the world's most expensive country for smokers, a pack will set you back to the equivalent of 20 US dollars. That means to keep up a 20 a day habit for a year, it'll cost Americans $2,700 and Australians a whopping 7,300 US dollars. And what about vaping? Well, it's less expensive and experts still believe may be less harmful but the idea is still the same. Why spend money on something you don't need and just leads to addiction? Number 7. Extended Warranties So you're a responsible and reasonably cautious person. You've just bought a shiny new flat screen TV. The salesperson helpfully suggests you cover it for damages by taking out an extended warranty. It must be a good idea, right? Wrong. First of all, most things don't just break. Sure, every now and again you'll need repairs, but if you put the money into an emergency fund instead, in most cases this will easily cover repairs. And if you don't and end up needing it, guess what? You still have the money left at the end. So why do manufacturers make such a big deal out of these? No prizes for guessing that extended warranties are a huge moneymaker, and an easy one as they are rarely used. In the USA, it's a $40 billion a year business, worth a lot to the manufacturers, but usually not so much for customers. Number 8. Coupons and Special Offers this is another example of how retailers manage to make you think you're getting an amazing deal when, in fact, they're selling you something you don't need. The systems that shops use means that you have to buy a lot of products in exchange for the coupons. So you start by overbuying just to get your hands on them, and then you use them to purchase something you wouldn't even think about buying. Basically, it's the perfect way to make you go overboard in spending and forget that your bank account has limits. Number 9. Energy drinks. Energy drinks are actually pretty expensive. Based on volume, Red Bull costs more than double the price of Coca-Cola, and there are more expensive energy drinks out there. Once in a while, maybe it's not a problem, but for people with serious energy drink habits, this can burn a hole in their pockets. And drinking them in excess doesn't do your health any favors either. But do they actually do what they say on the label and give you energy? Research says yes, but only for a short time, which means you'll feel the need to top up again later and spend even more. Number 10. Expensive Cable Packages The average American spends $100 a month on cable, and there are plenty who spend a double that or more. Those $100 will typically pay for 200 channels. On a per-channel basis, that's not a bad value. But do you really have time to watch all of them? And if you do, you need to ask yourself some serious questions about what you're doing with your time. In fact, the average person surveyed watches around 10 of those channels a month, and 80% said they felt they'd wasted money on cable. Need I say more? We'll just add that it's surprising that cable packages are still doing well, even with streaming services like Netflix and Disney Plus offering far better value for money. If you focus on improving yourself rather than giving yourself limitless viewing options, you'll start to see a difference in your wallet and how fulfilled you feel. Number 11. Luxury Branded Goods You Can't Afford We don't want to look like we're contradicting ourselves with this one. Yes, we've done a lot of videos about luxury goods and sometimes we do sing their praises. And there are exceptions, but a lot of luxury brands do offer genuine quality. But the question is, can you really afford it? Are you trying to impress people with Burberry but have trouble paying your rent? Well, you're not fooling anyone. People will soon mark you down as fake rich, a topic we also did a video on recently. When your bank balance justifies it and if you still feel the need, then you can indulge yourself in some luxury goods. Number 12. The Latest Tech This is exactly the same argument as with luxury goods. If you're due for an upgrade, then go for it. 
If you really need that MacBook Pro for your work, then it's making you money so you can justify it. But if it's just to impress people or fool yourself that you're up there with the rich, then you need to think about your necessities first. Number 13. Cheap junk that's going to break quickly. Let's take a plunge straight from luxury goods into the other end of the spectrum. Cheap junk. Go too expensive and you're wasting money, but go too cheap and before you know it, you'll have to replace it and spend some more money. Whether it's shoes, furniture, or car repairs, if you go for the cheapest you can find, you'll still spend a sum of money you really didn't want to throw away, and pretty soon something will have gone wrong and you'll be back in the same position you were before. Conclusion, don't buy luxury stuff you can't afford, but still go for quality. Number 14. Splurging on baby products Don't get us wrong, if you or your partner has just given birth, of course you'll need to spend money on the latest addition to the family. It's just, there are a lot of people who really go overboard. Cue huge amounts of toys and baby accessories, some of which will barely get used. And with the baby clothes, it makes sense to go cheap, because they'll only be useful for a few months. When Junior grows just a little, they'll be obsolete. Just look at the trend for designer baby clothes. Do babies really care about the fashion label on their teensy tiny hoodie? I don't think so. Number 15. Excess of personal care or beauty products. We've noticed a lot of people out there have huge selections of personal health care and beauty products, and many of them rarely, if ever, get used. That's because they believe the hype every time they see a product that promises smoother skin, fewer wrinkles, or whatever they put on the label to make you buy it. So they splash out on a face cream, a hand cream, a moisturizer, night cream, and the whole list, all marketed directly toward their skin type. And are they really making you look any younger or better? Try and ask yourself how many you actually need, and keep in mind that these products usually aren't cheap. And with that, Aluxers, we're at the end of our list. But before you go, we of course have a question. We always love to hear what you have to say about our videos, and yes, we do read the comments and often reply to them too. So we're curious, which of the items in this video do you think people waste the most money on where you are? Let us know in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, here's that bonus we owe you. Our last item on this list might come as a bit of a surprise to you keeping money in the bank. We're not saying you should ditch your bank account and stash your cash under your mattress. We're just saying you might want to put a portion of it every month into something that will bring you long-term wealth. If you keep it all in the bank, you'll be tempted to spend it, but try putting it in, say, an index fund, which tracks the best performing funds on the stock market, and on average grows by 7% a year. That flat out beats a typical interest rate on a bank account, which is close to zero. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.